Welcome to the Bernard Lee Poker Show. We are very fortunate to have our guest this week. She is not only a two-time WSOP bracelet winner. She is not only a reigning Poker Masters champion, but she is the three-time reigning female GPI player of the year. Boy, that's a mouthful, by the way. But <laughs> she is a player that is uh, really has established herself over the last few years as not a great female player, just a phenomenal poker player. Really pleased to have her on the show, Kristen Bicknell. Kristen, thanks for joining us here on the Bernard Lee Poker Show. Thank you. Thanks for having me, and thanks for the introduction. It's well, yeah, very flattering. Obviously, well-deserved. Um, it is fascinating to me about your career. I've, I've been wanting to have you on. I think you were briefly on the show because I was interviewing Alex while you were both in the car and I heard the shout out and we had you on the oh, show right. uh, a couple yeah. of years ago. Uh, but yep. it's great to have you on uh, solo as well deserved. Uh, we talked about the uh, GPI. We had Maria Ho on uh, a few weeks ago and and she made sure she did the shout out to you when Alex <laughs> got his award saying that it was Kristen McNell's uh, boyfriend. So that was fantastic. We love that. Yes. Um, but also later on, um, uh, we are going to be talking about a lot of interesting stuff in the world of poker. But I really want to talk with you about your career on how you got started in all of this because you have – somewhat of a typical path in the sense of playing a lot in college, playing online, etc. But, you know, you started out uh, playing not a tremendous amount of fanfare per se in the public. A lot of people knew you online because you were a supernova elite on Poker Stars, And then you have this tremendous breakthrough in 2013 winning a WSOP Ladies Championship. Now, I'm, I'm not belittling that because I, I'll have a Ladies Championship bracelet on my wrist all day and night if I could have a bracelet. But many of the women who win, not many, some of the women who win, that's their pinnacle of their career. Th that's it. But Absolutely. you, just a couple years later, went on to win your second bracelet. And it, this was in an open event. And now, all of a sudden, people are really and i'm not just talking about people in the world of poker i think a lot of people in the world of poker knew who you were but now the media is starting to latch on and being like wait a second she is really making her mark and then i think last year when you won the poker masters event i think really now you suddenly start getting into this status of like i said at the beginning of the <laughs> intro it's not about female poker player anymore it's sure. about poker player and uh, we we'll definitely talk a little bit more about the upcoming poker masters because boy is that going to be a little bit interesting it's not going to be live it's going to be online on party poker who, who where yeah. you are sponsored but we'll talk a little bit more about that i want to talk how you got started in your career uh I, I, it sounds like you played a lot online in college did you start even before college um i actually that's when i was taught poker i hadn't really known anything about the game. Um, and some friends one night were all playing and taught me the game. And I actually played live to begin with. Um, so mainly, you know, I think we played $20 sit and goes or something. Right, and then right. um, I was living in Ottawa, Ontario at the time. And I don't think we had a casino that even had poker near us or anything like that. The boom hadn't happened yet. This right. is probably 2000 four or five, right. 2000, something like that. Um, and, but there was a poker community and we actually had a website, uh, where they had like a Ottawa poker forum community and we had a player, um, Mark Karam. I don't know if you ever, Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, that, cool. That's okay. old school. That's he old school. was really, he yeah, was. He, he was. really, um, kind of tied the whole community together actually uh -huh. was, you know, he had, um, I forget exactly, but a bunch of deep EPT runs yes. and a bunch yeah. of deep runs. Right. He's a great player. He and... would come down to Foxwoods and, and uh, Borgata and the East Coast. And so, yeah, that's why I knew him. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. 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 So honestly, I mean, he was probably, you know, I haven't really thought about this because um, it's been so long, but he definitely uh, 
because of him, he brought a lot of people together in Ottawa mm. to get the poker community going. Right. And we had, um, at one point, I think there was even like three underground, like big games going and we'd have weekly tournaments and things like that. So I got to play, um, I got to learn sort of with the sit and go style format, but mm. then these clubs, we would want to run cash games. So I, you know, started playing one, two and two, five. So I kind of got the best of both worlds by learning a little bit about tournament strategy and then also having cash games. Right. Now I definitely was better at cash games. <laughs> and I, yeah. I, I tend to think like if it was a, only a matter of money, I probably would still just play cash. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I started uh, that year kind of doing that, like the home sit and goes, cash games. And then I found a casino near where my parents lived that I could play. I was 18 years old, so I could only play on those like the Indian Reserve casinos. Mm -hmm. um, and we went to a poker room and, yeah, played one, two. I think I worked myself up to two, five, probably just kind of borrowed a few hundred dollars from my parents to play. Right. And I was so fortunate at the time, you know, being in university, um, you know, I had no responsibility whatsoever. So I, I was so fortunate that I got to learn poker basically as a free roll. You know, I was in a spot where I had lots of time on my hands. Um, you know, there was all this low stakes stuff to play and I really just kind of worked it up from there and then found online poker. And I'll, I can still vividly remember the day I had a class to attend, but I had registered a tournament on Poker Stars. I think it was an $11 tournament or $22 tournament. Right. And uh, it was going deep, going deep. And I was like, oh, like my class starts at four or whatever it was. And I was like, I think I might miss, miss this. I think I might miss this. <laughs> and I won. And it was oh. the first tournament I'd won. And right. I think I turned, you know, $11 into, I, I want to say it was like maybe 4000 or something. Right, right, right. So it was one of those, like, it was a really long tournament, uh, a huge field. And you know, you know how it is. You get the tournament bug and poker kind of hooked me. Right. And so from there it was, okay, you, you know, I somewhat finished school, attended class when it was convenient, <laughs> but mainly focused on when you got, When you got knocked out of tournaments, that's when you went to exactly, class. <laughs> exactly. When I was like, oh, there's an exam. I guess right. I'll go try to get yeah. some numbers, see what I can do. And, um, and then got going with online and found out about the Supernova Elite program really started playing there and kind of like you said um at, throughout this whole time i kind of tried to continue to play live when i could you know we had a group of friends um like i was saying that would go to turning stone we right, would, right 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 yeah, yeah so i went to those series a lot and that was fun so i kind of had a little bit of tournament experience and it was always a dream of mine to play the main event yeah so I'd always go to Vegas during the World Series, you know, play satellites because I definitely couldn't afford playing the main event at that time. Sure. Um, so I played the mega satellites. And one year, um, I think it was maybe one of the first times I played. Um, so I would go to Vegas, play cash games, and I'd always play the ladies event because I knew like, you know what, this is probably I should have a good edge in that field. Um, so I play the ladies event, play some smaller events at the Venetian or whatever. And yeah, just one year. um it was probably my fifth or sixth ladies event that I'd played. I went into it. Um, I should preface it by saying the other events before I didn't play very well because I, <laughs> yeah. I thought that I could get away with playing like 80% of hands. Right. And so the year that I had won, I was like, okay, this year I'm not going to spew. I'm going to play good. Right. <laughs> I have right. to take this seriously. Right. And like, I can't open whatever it is, you know, Jack six off under the gun. Right. 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 <laughs> Wait till I'm at least suited. So, um, yeah, I just decided that year, you know, take it more seriously. And obviously like to win any tournament, you have to get lucky. You right. know, there's an element of luck and yeah. Anyways, from there kind of just grinded it up, you know? Right. And, right. uh, and then like you said, um, after the second bracelet, that's when I think one thing about poker, um, and that I'm so fortunate for is kind of building a reputation and having friends and people who believe in you and say, want to, you know, um, the way that I got started in tournaments was really, I was just playing cash games on my own and I had my own bankroll and I was doing fine, but I was um, traveling with some poker players who were willing to put me into main events or to take a large piece of me to sure. play in the main event. And that's important to get those opportunities. And I think, you know, especially as like a, a young upcoming person, like where do you just come up with $10,000, right? Right. 
So I, yeah, I've just been really fortunate along the way to kind of, you know, connect with the right people, I think, and have, you know, good doors open to me. And I definitely was always hungry to find them as well. We're talking with Kristen McNell, who is a two-time WSOP bracelet winner and also three-time reigning female GPI player of the year. You, you, like you talked about, you won the female, uh, the ladies bracelet in 2013, then won your second bracelet, 1500 No Limit Hold'em Bounty event. This one uh, had a big field, 2,158 players. That you won for almost $300,000. But from like 2013 to 2016, a little bit of a break in live. Um, did you not play a lot of tournaments? Did you play a lot of cash? There was a break on in live poker, but all I was doing oh, was you're prob- doing probably playing online cash games like yeah. 10. So that was kind of when I was doing Supernova Elite and um, – yeah, just playing a lot of cash online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so um, you got your dream come true to cash into a main event in 2016. You got deep 885th in 2018. Also, uh, you cashed in the main event, uh, getting deep as well, 492nd. At this point, you've had a lot of experience playing in these bracelet events. Uh, you've cashed numerous times, but... Is the main event just different? It's so different. You know, I was just thinking to myself today, um, if as a poker player, or well, for me as a tournament player, if you could tell me, you know, I could play, let's just say a million dollar buy-in and it's a two day event and win that, maybe I should cut it back a little bit. You can play a hundred K that's a turbo sure. and win that. And, you know, sometimes those are like almost 2 million to win. Okay. So I could pick that or I could pick like a five day or, or like the main event of poker uh, or the the World Series, like you would always pick the longer event for some reason because it's it's like as you know, like every day the adrenaline builds, yeah. the excitement builds, and the whole journey of of you know like a five day tournament or eight day or whatever it is is just so fun and you know that's when you know money put aside, the enjoyment is there for me. Right. It's just I love that process. Well, I think also I've talked about this a lot with players and and you tell me if you agree is that the main event especially is as if you're playing three or four different events. You know, yes. you one I almost think like day 1 is an event in and of itself because it's yes. it's the only tournament where day 1 has a bubble. That means nothing, literally nothing. It's just so everyone can call home and say I made it through day 1. Yeah. I've had people who have come up to me um, uh, that, that didn't realize some of the deep runs I've had. And yeah. they've said, you know, my buddy made it through day one of the main event. Have you ever done that? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, I've done it. <laughs> and I'm- then after that, obviously there's the money bubble, right? So there's a, the, yeah. the event leading up to the money bubble. And then to me, right after the money bubble is broken, First, there's this like literally it's like a, a, a tsunami of people walking out the door because you have like, you know, I remember one year I counted. It was like 360 people got knocked down in 45 minutes. I mean, something yeah. ridiculous. I can right? tell you it's terrible when you're in that line. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be a part right. of that group. Yeah. <laughs> I, I always, you know, you, you get through that and then that's yeah. day four. And now to me, the next tournament starts, right? Because there's about 300 people. And to get down to that final 150 or 27, that's another tournament. And then, of course, you know, the end. I only yeah. imagine. Yeah. yeah. It's, what a it, dream. It, it is just, you know, it's uh, to me, what's really cool, and I, I, I say this, I've been fortunate to be close to this a couple times, is you're down to like the last 100 or so, and they're closing tables. Literally, you hear, gung, gung. And and you kind of feel like, couldn't you just wait till we're on break? Like, like yeah. we're really, like, focused here. And yeah. they're literally breaking tables down. And, you know, with 100 players left, you only got 10, 12 tables. And you literally yeah. look around the room and say, oh, my God, somebody in this room. In yeah, the-, the atmosphere is yeah. so different. Oh, it's, it's so, so you know, intense. It's, now it's, it's like- media. Now people. And, it's, and you literally say, you know, three days, somebody in this room is going to be the world champ. That's the amazing thing, you know? Yeah, it's amazing. And there's that event just has such a, a, 
special vibe that yeah. I hope never changes. And I almost, no other event compares and I hope it just stays that way because right. there's just something so sweet about that. Right, right, right. It, yeah. it, it, is, it is still this event where the pros with the amateurs to yeah. old time to young, I mean, it's just such a different event where, yeah, people play, let's be honest, badly at times. Yeah. But, but like they say, you have to avoid the landmines you know, I got knocked out one year and there's nothing you can do about it. It was literally end of level four. We played five levels. I had a big stack. He had a big stack. We got it all in. I had aces. And his response was, of course, Bernard Lee would only shove it in with aces there. And I'm like, yeah, I probably would only shove in a 70,000 chip stack and level four with aces. And he turned a king. And it, ju I, yeah. I, and I, I turned a flush draw. And I have to tell you, I was so confident that it was coming. Oh. Like I was like, something was going to happen. Like when yeah, I turned you, the flush, I go, it. well, the flush is going to come on the river. And when it didn't hit, I, I literally said to myself, I said, how can you do this? Like, this is the main event. You can do this in any event during the entire year, but you can't let this happen I in know. the main event. I and know. I was so it's... devastated to walk out of there going, I cannot believe my aces just got cracked by Kings for 150 K it's the worst. on day yeah. one you know it's just unbelievable it's just amazing yeah. um, but like i said we you've had such an incredible lead up to 2019 you you've been poi for a female gpi three times in a row i mean incredible alex um uh fox and they've talked about him doing it two years in a row got it you've now done this three years in a row 94 straight weeks leading into 2020 $2.4 million in 2019, three wins, 14 top fives, uh, you know, an incredible scenario. But last year, really kind of the icing on the cake was this win at the Poker Masters, your largest cash. I, do you feel it was your biggest win? Because of what we kind of talked about before about, you know, the lead up and all that stuff, I, I don't yeah, that's funny. <laughs> in yeah, some yeah. weird way. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it was a pretty small field for one thing. Right. I feel like it was definitely one of the most, it, it was an enjoyable experience and it was definitely an experience that to me almost felt like, I don't necessarily want to say overdue, but, um, almost, you know, it's like as somebody who, let's say I just started playing 20, like high roller events, like 25 K's or something like that. Right. There's this intense pressure to like close one just right. to show, you know, to whoever that it is or to yourself that you can do it. And I feel like when you finally get that, you know, the spot where I'm on a final table with like, you know, the best players in the world and I close in that spot and not, not to mention in a spot where I felt like very happy with how I played, you know, there was some elements of luck, of course, but it didn't feel like a final table that I've got particularly lucky on, right. um, or unlucky, but, um, I just feel really proud with how I played and it felt good to finally just, yeah, like win one of those events that kind of felt like a, um, like a milestone to hit. Right. If that right. makes sense. Yeah. yeah no, Where, absolutely. you know, and those milestones change throughout your career. So perhaps, you know, probably one of like the best wins I ever really had was, you know, the ladies events or the, the bounty event. Right. Um, and I've definitely had final tables that feel really exciting and, um, kind of felt like they also, uh, again, important milestones throughout the career. So I think for the 25 K it just felt like a milestone. I really was hungry to hit mm -hmm. and that I hit it. Um, and you know, and then there's definitely other goals that I have. Like I really want to win a main event so badly. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. And I have, I don't think I have, I don't know. Maybe, I'm pretty sure I haven't won. Like I haven't won like a big 10 K main event. Like, yeah. a, you know, yeah, yeah. I really want to win one of those yeah. really badly. Oh, I guess what I've won is the the World Series events, but sure. <laughs> so I have. But um, but like a, like a 10k or something right. like that. You know, like a million dollars for right. first. So a seven figure score and and yeah, beating a thousand people, right. that kind of thing. It's just so exciting. I think what it is is, um, 
the multiple day events and going to sleep with all the adrenaline and waking up. And then as you know, like with the main event, one of the funnest things I think is the, um, the element of like the marathon aspect, but like for your mind, right. cause you see at the of end of the day, you, you see everybody get tired and everybody fade or everybody's patience kind of go. And I love that, like really pushing yourself mentally yeah, to like yeah. focus, focus, focus. You know, you have a big stack, you lose a huge hand and like, okay, get it. Like, Right. compose yourself, you know, and I love that struggle and challenge of that. So I think you really get that in those big main events because there's so many highs and lows. Exactly. So with regards to this year's Poker Masters, it's a very interesting scenario because of what we're facing uh, with COVID-19. Uh, the Poker Masters will not be held at the Poker Go studio, but instead Party Poker and Poker Central now are going to debut the Poker Masters Online, where there is over $16 million in guaranteed prize pool money. 30 high roller events will take place. It starts this week, Sunday, April 12th. It'll go all the way through to Sunday, April 26th. The online champion will, in addition to obviously their prize money that they win for their events, will receive $50,000 and be awarded the uh, coveted Purple Poker Masters jacket. Uh, is this exciting? I mean, it's very interesting in my book because the Poker Masters obviously is held at the Poker Go studio. It's in Las Vegas. Party Poker is not in the United States as a online um uh site and so therefore you who are you're in canada you're able to play all these events for party poker in canada and the poker masters it's a very unusual scenario right because there are a lot of u.s players that i guess will have to make a decision whether to come up to uh canada or go to another country to just be able to play the poker masters and the funny thing is some of them are living in las vegas and now they have to go somewhere else just to play in this event right yeah i'm not sure to be honest and i wish i would have checked this before i'm not sure if maybe they're allowing the u.s players to play or not because maybe it's considered a I'm not really sure how that's yeah. working exactly, yeah. but it's so great that we, you know, it's such an unfortunate circumstance that's happened, but, um, I'm just so happy that they've been able to move these events online. And, um, recently I've played in the Irish open that was planned and got rescheduled and moved to online. And, um, yeah, it's been fun and nice and it's cool because you get to play with your, um, your real name, which oh. is, I think a really cool element. Yeah. So so there's no hiding anybody. No, there's no hiding in yeah, that. Yeah. So I, I thought it was nice. Yeah. Well, but... I think I think also the you know for the world of poker, the small you know silver lining is that online poker has definitely seen a tremendous spike, a tremendous boom. I'm talking specifically about the U.S. in yeah. the scenario. I mean that's across the world, but for the U.S., hopefully this at least gives a little bit of a impetus for regulation because I think that there is now proof that listen, there is a market here. People want to play, regulate it. You'll get some taxes. You'll get a lot of taxes. I remember way back when when they were thinking about we're talking taxes in the billions. That's B, not millions. And so in a world where we're, you know, money is of short supply, that's probably a, a, a good thing. But, yeah. you know, it's it's very interesting. Like you said, Irish Open now playing online. I think it, th this could be somewhat of a trend, definitely overseas, outside of the United States. A lot of these events may suddenly start trending that way. And, you know, ironically, you yeah. may see even some bigger fields because it's from all over the world. Not You, you don't have to come to one location, right? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The um, I know the Irish Open, I just played day one. I think it was uh, two days ago or yesterday. Anyways, they already met the, I think it's a three day, three starting days and they already smashed the guarantee on day one, <laughs> day one. A. So right. it's pretty crazy. The turnouts have been amazing. So yeah, yeah it, it is going to be very interesting. Um, I know for myself, I've pretty much been playing online poker every day right. and, uh, yeah, it's, it seems like it's booming. That's for sure. Right. Well, incredible, uh, you know, with regards to everything that you've experienced, how was the transition from when you were saying you were playing, you started out live, 
But then you really focused on online. You even said from 2013 to 2016, yeah. pretty much you were online, supernova elite, et cetera, et cetera. What, but now, you know, you have played, you still play a lot online, but you do a lot more live. How was that transition? Was it fairly smooth because you had this experience previously? Yeah, I mean, I always considered myself both like a, both an online player right. and a live player. So yeah. I never considered myself to specialize in either. I think that um, there's elements of live poker I might be better at and elements of online poker that I like. And I've pretty much never fully committed to one or the other. So even if I'm, you know, sometimes let's just say we travel to wherever, a EPT event or something, there's a good chance that, one out of five of those days I'm playing online typically. <laughs> right, right, right. So, you know, you, but you bust a live tournament and then you go and play online. And I think that, um, I think you can really get good at poker playing online. Mm -hmm. And even in the last month, I was thinking the other day, I'm like, wow, I feel like my, I, my game has improved so much in the last few weeks, just right. because I've gotten, you know, all that volume in. I'm registering like 30 tournaments a day versus right. one, right. you know? Um, right. so yeah. So I think that, you know, there's always different elements to both, mm -hmm. um, online and live poker, but it's not really necessarily something that I, it's like difficult for me to transition to. What I find hard is I'm sure that the next time I go and play live, it will be a little bit off, you know, awkward at first. Right. Be like, oh wait, I need to like think about composure again. Right, right, and, right, right. You know, <laughs> why is I, the next hand not coming? Come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, so I think right. it's just adjusting and being able to sort of um, go through that like mental, you know, shifting of gears that right. you need to. I, I yeah. find what's funny for me is that I've been, I've been such a live player my entire life. I played online, obviously when the boom was there, but I was primarily a live player. And I find it funny that when I play online, like I have been playing some home games and things of that nature, I have to remain patient because I yeah. feel like the game, the, the hands are coming so quick. You're like, you want to keep playing yeah. Whereas live, you can, you know, you, you're waiting two minutes for the hand to sit. You you don't have to be patient in this in yeah. that sense because you just are. You have to. You don't have a choice. Whereas yeah, online, the hands are coming so quickly. And... I sometimes realize, you know what? There'll be one in thirty seconds. Just wait, and I get yeah. myself into trouble when when you start doing that kind of thing. So yeah, I think the adjustment is probably harder for people who are live to move to online. Yeah. I think that if you were able to start online early in your poker career it's a little bit easier to then go and play live poker but yeah online can be very different and then the money doesn't necessarily feel real sometimes right. or like chips don't feel real i hear <laughs> right. people joke about that a lot and i i feel like i definitely bluff more online than i do live right 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 right, right. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's much I, easier to pull some crazy bluff or something when it's just you know clicking some buttons and right you have to exactly look at the uh, eye, yeah i'll know. just hit the pot button whatever exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then that's the thing too is like if you're if you're a little tilted and you're playing online it's so easy just to like make bad plays right. i feel like because it's just clicking buttons exactly exactly yeah. and, and you have and you if you make a mistake you, you know you you have the screen to kind of hide your embarrassment whereas like exactly. if you're live and you make that mistake you're berating like what do you yeah. that, that's horrible you you know online you go i'll just turn off my computer <laughs> exactly yeah, that social exactly. yeah exactly um uh well i one kristen thanks so much for joining us really Thank appreciate you. it um i really appreciate your perspective on on that uh like uh, everyone else has we were hopefully going to get on more people and more other perspectives as well um, and I wish you all the best in the Poker Masters uh, upcoming, and hopefully you can uh, have a great run over those uh, several events, and uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Kristen Bicknell here on the Bernard Lee Poker Show. Just fantastic player, three-time female GPI player of the year, two-time bracelet winner, and, and of course gives her perspective on the Shooting Star Bay 101. We'll have more interviews uh, coming up in the next few weeks, and as always, may you always go in with the best hand, and may you never get unlucky. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Kristen, thanks so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me and everyone out there. Don't forget, like and subscribe.